Hello everyone. Today's lesson is going to be about taking a line drawing that you have and applying a grayscale layer for coloring. And what we're going to do is we're going to eventually combine both layers so that you can paint a realistic uh, cover over everything that you've drawn. Now I'm going to be approaching this in two ways. The first way is showing you that this particular sketch is a digital sketch. You can see that I'm turning the layer off and on like this. And then the background layer is a natural cream color. So I'm turning it off and on and you can see the background default white color. The reason I'm doing this is because those of you listening may have two approaches to sketching. You're either doing it traditionally in a sketchbook or you're doing it um, digitally on a tablet. There, there is a little bit of a difference that you're going to have to approach this with when it comes to scanning in your drawings and then painting on top of that scanned image. Obviously, with the traditional approach, you don't have the, I guess you could say, the luxury of turning layers off, off and on. You have to just set your color layer to whatever opacity you want, whether it's you know, overlay or multiply, and then paint that way. So I'll show you how to do both of them. But let's get started here. Now, when we approach a painting where we're taking a line drawing and we want to you know, uh, polish it up and make it more realistic, there's a tendency to jump right into color. And that's only something that a more experienced artist should do. And even really experienced artists, they still jump in with the grayscale values first. I encourage the grayscale values, particularly because if your values are not correct, then it does not matter how well you can paint and blend and draw, your, your art will look really bad because it'll look washed out, there's going to be highlights on it where they shouldn't exist, etc. Alright, so let's get started. Over here I have three layers, I'm going to call the one layer sketch, okay, and then layer two, I'm going to call it BG for background. All right, now, the, it's different than the locked background for default. I'm going to make a new layer, and that is going to be called values. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Okay, so values. Now, what I'm doing is I'm setting the values layer in between the sketch and the background so that I don't have to hit multiply and collect the tannish color of the background. It, what it'll do is it'll sit separately only under the sketch, which is what you want. All right, so where do we go from here? We're gonna go over here to the color box or the color picker, whatever you wanna call it. Now, the great thing about values is that you only need to start with three values. If you notice the color picker here, it's in the very, very middle. Okay, so not exactly in the middle. I can't eyeball it, I'm not perfect. There's the middle. Right, so let's hit okay. And now over here, I'm just gonna make sure I had a hard round and make sure it's at 100% opacity. And I'm just going to put the first one right here. So it's just a little dot. That is what we in fine art like to call the local value. All right, so if you're drawing, there's also local tone. All right, let's go back into the color picker. Let's pick our second one. And now we wanna do the highlighted gray so the value tone that's going to be showing highlights from a light source what it, from whatever direction that you have so instead of picking white which you should never pick you go halfway to white and what that does and you just slide it directly up don't go in a little bit and, and pick up color go directly to gray and go about halfway to white hit okay and then you're going to put that above it and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to eye drop my local value the one that I started with. And then I'm gonna go back into the color picker, making sure that that little cursor is where I left it. And then the shadow version of that local value is going to be halfway to black. And this is a really cool trick that I'm sure many people have learned from Scott Robertson, because he uses a lot in his Photoshop tutorials. And then here it is. So when I look at this creature or environment or whatever I'm going to paint, I can paint anything I want with those three. 
Now you're probably asking, wait a minute, there's a whole spectrum of values happening whenever you paint. Yes, but that's when those three values mix together. That's the beauty of having Photoshop and your eyedropper so that you can pick and choose where those values mix. So you're never going all over the place. You're never going back into the color picker and going, you know what, I think the gray looks this gray or it's a little bit darker here because there's no light. Oh, well, there's a metal highlight, so it's almost white. No, it, it keeps you in check, which is really, really good. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remain on my values layer, and I'm gonna eye drop my local value like this. And then I'm going to jump right into putting the local value directly under my uh, pencil sketch, okay, just like this. And once I do a good job and sure all the places are filled then we can jump into adding more all right so um, enjoy my little sped up sketch here and then we'll meet back when this is all done Okay, so now we have a, a pretty good base for the local tone or local value. Next thing we need to do is we need to establish the light source. So for the way this drawing is laid out, I think it's gonna be most comfortable to have it from the upper left, just because there, or actually the way I drew the shadow is probably from top down, just because there's no cast shadow over here on the right. So let's do it from top down. In that case, what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, instead of painting directly on top of the gray that I have and stay on that layer, I'm going to make a new layer, okay? And it's gonna sit directly above values. I'm just gonna hold down Alt, and I'm going to hover my cursor over the where the two layers meet. So you're gonna see this little arrow and then a white box. Those of you that are very familiar with this, just bear with me. Those of you that are not familiar with this, what this does is that when you click, you're gonna see this box indent, and then you're gonna see the, the uh, layer under it underlined. So what that little arrow means is that anything I do on this new one that I made, it's only going to sit on top of that gray value layer. This is a really, really good way to keep different effects separated. You don't have to jump into the effects layers or anything. This is a really good way to just say, hey, I want to use this certain color or I want to use, um, you know, like lights and darks and it only happens on that layer. So with this said, I'm going to eye drop the, the lighter version of the three tones that I chose. So what this is, is this is going to be my light source. Now I'm going to choose a very light uh, or I'm sorry, uh, an airbrush that has a very fanned out um, effect on the edges. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lightly run it across the top here near the heads like this. Now, why am I doing this? Why am I not doing anything down here yet? I'm just trying to establish where a light that is a diffused light, which is what this is mimicking, like an ambient diffused light, how that's going to disperse across the character's um, body. So most of the light's going to hit up here in the head. Now there's obviously going to be some cast shadows down here and we'll get into that. Um, there are some parts on the body where this light is still going to touch, probably out here on the hand because the left arm is slightly uh, pointed outwards towards the side of the character like this. And then um, these legs. So when the light's coming down, it's probably gonna hit some of these, I guess you can call them knee joints. So we'll just kind of lightly spray on some highlight there and then 
probably out here on top of that gnarly looking head. And we'll get into more detail too, like, you know, out here on the, on the spikes. Um, there's going to be some highlights because I, I ultimately do want to make the skin rather gross and salamander-like where there's, I don't know if you wanted to call it uh, saliva or whatever else is making it slippery. But anyway, let's start looking at the cast shadows now. All right, so I'm going to use the, the shadow version of the local tone right here. So I'm just going to eye drop that keep using my airbrush and then I'm going to see well if this thing is lit from above you see this creature's whole top half all the torso and the head it's going to be casting a shadow across this thing okay, because it, especially if it's lit from above so then what I'll do is I'll just go in here near the neck go under the jaw like this and then we'll cast it down there now one thing I can do is I can do a lighter opacity for the shadow. And I don't really know if I want to do that yet. Hold on a sec. I think I just made a mistake. Yes, I did. The shadow is going to be separate. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and then click in there. So that arrow stacked on top of that arrow, it doesn't matter where those are located. It's all going to happen on this layer. Now, now I can do it. Okay, now it looks better. All right, so that's gonna be cast right there. This is all gonna be under shadow here. Um, definitely the legs. Whenever you do an arachnid type creature, it's always cooler when you make the ends of anything sharp, especially claws or spikes, if it's darkened. For some reason, it just looks more sinister. It happens a lot in nature when you look at insects, especially, I mean, Black Widow doesn't really count because it's almost all black. But a lot of the beetles, a lot of the centipedes have darker fingers, like it's, it's pretty creepy. All right, so all this is gonna be in shadow. This is gonna collect some shadow right here, but I'm gonna darken some of the armpit. And I'm just gonna kind of slowly fade up that shadow here. So let's, let's turn it around and see what that looks like. Now I'm gonna run a little experiment. I'm gonna take layer two and I'm going to multiply. So it doesn't look like it really matters. So there's multiply, there's normal. Let's go back to multiply to see. Yeah, it darkens a little bit. Let's just stay at normal. It doesn't really matter. All right, so now that we got that, I'm just gonna fade in some of that shadow for there, just for atmospheric purposes. Um, and, we, and we can also get into, oh yeah, and also the face is gonna cast shadow. The head is gonna cast shadow on that tongue that. The other thing that I want to do is I want to go to the sketch. I want to see what multiply does. If that changes anything. I think it does because it, it makes the sketch stand out just a little more within the gray. So that I can that I can use. I don't want to manipulate this stuff too much because I want it to be as raw as possible. Whenever I digitally paint, I try to pretend that I'm I'm actually still painting on a canvas like if I was in the year 1500. Okay, there was no Photoshop, obviously. So, you know, let's see what we can do with this. All right, so now we have our three, our three tones working for us. We have the light, we have the medium, which is the local tone, and then we have the, uh, the dark. And I also see that there's, there's gonna be another cast shadow right here near the armpit because that, that arm is gonna be coming down. Now I'm doing a diffused cast shadow. If you wanna make it a harsh light or a spotlight, then you could just use a, a harder light if you want. And there are times when we probably could. So for example, let's go into uh, these stacked layers right here. Let's make one more layer like this. And I'm going to hold down Alt like this. But instead of using this fan brush, I'm going to choose one that has a, a tapered end. So you can go to your standard round and just make sure that the round brush is tapered at the end. And then you can turn your opacity down to about 80. So you just go up here. Just go to 80. Oh, 78, doesn't really matter. 
and then you could run it across there and you can see that that shadow is a little bit harsher. If that works for you better than a diffused ambient shadow, it really just depends on the atmosphere. So like for example, inside here, inside that neck, yeah, there's probably going to be a, a more harsher shadow because the object is closer to the surface. So if you want to go under the neck here and kind of fade that out, that would work. Um, you know, you can take your eraser brush, make sure it's soft and just kind of erase around the edges there. You can really play with this. You can turn that on multiply and then you can get, you can get some pretty neat effects. So for example, under here in the armpit, um, oh, that's an erase. There you go. There's the brush on the armpit is harsher here, here, um, maybe down here where there would be a core shadow. A lot of a lot of really cool opportunities and it also adds uh, a re really good contrast okay, so like here that that would definitely work uh, and then maybe right inside the mouth on top of the tongue i'm going to turn the opacity down just a little okay so somewhere around there so now we have a total of uh one two three four and then five layers to actually sketch and paint on and then we have the background layer all right, so what I'm gonna do for the rest of this lesson is I'm not gonna go all out and just illustrate the heck out of it because I, I would need several more hours. What I'm doing here is giving you a slightly more polished sketch render that you could possibly add in your portfolio. If you're going down the development pipeline and you have a thumbnail that you like, you brought the thumbnail into a better looking sketch and then from the better looking sketch, you want to add some values to it. That is something that's, that's a lot of fun. So now the real fun part happens. We can go into the local tone here, right here. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to the values layer, or actually no, because we have to combine them. So let's combine them. So let's, let's combine all the gray. So we're at layer three, two, one, and then we're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna click on values. And that highlights everything in gray, all right? And then we're just gonna right click on all of that. We're gonna go to merge layers. So now only the paint is highlighted and we can go back in and manipulate that. And then you have the sketch that's separate. Okay, and then you have your background. All right, so now that we're into this, Now that we have that, now we can go into the slightly more refined approach to painting. Um, we're on the gray layer here, and then I have the local tone highlighted. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a brush that I can paint with. And notice how this entire time I have not zoomed in. That is a very bad habit to get into among aspiring artists because we want to jump right into the details and we want to zoom in and make sure everything is good and we're spending way too much time on it. Whereas if you just zoom out the way you would view it anyway, and if it looks good zoomed out, that means all the brush strokes you're putting down look good anyway. So then you don't need to go into detail unless you are focusing on a specific area. So areas that I probably would go into detail later on would be here and then here because my, the focal point is this gnarly looking head with the tongue coming out and then this disgusting stomach with its own pinchers and head and everything. All right, so let's let's look at near the muscles here. Now I'm slowly painting in where I see some shadows. So down here towards the deltoid muscle like this. Let's uh, reverse the view. All right, and then there's going to be some obvious skin wrinkles. And what I'm doing now is I'm establishing where the muscles are, okay, the underlying structure of this creature. And uh, the other thing is, I, have, I think it's probably a good idea if I hit the lock mechanism. So, you know, not the, not the actual padlock here, but the checkerboard. Okay, so what that does is it locks it. So I can run my brush across everything and it only affects inside of the gray. The only reason I'm doing that is because um, it's all on one layer for me ready. I'm not using any other colors. All right, so once I have that, 
I'm going to just kind of paint in where the brachialis muscle would be and all the necessary anatomy. All right, so now we can start to see some muscle definition come through in the trapezius area. And of course you have the lat muscle, you got the bicep, you got the, you know, the rear delts, the side doid, the side doids, <laughs> the side delts, and then you have your brachialis and all the really cool forearm muscles here. Now notice how when I, I drop this over here, the uh, local tone, and then I'm applying it here, it's starting to get darker down on that hand. It's because it's blended in with that local tone already. So that's what's cool about using these three grays. Because again, if I were to just eyeball the shadow to put on these muscles, it would probably be off. But I'm using the exact tone that I already used throughout the body, so it keeps you in check, like I mentioned before. Right, so like here in the head, I'm putting in shadows where I think some of the light will, won't show as much. So like here in the neck. And you can exaggerate this a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's who knows what kind of atmosphere this creature's in. It could be in a, another dimension where the sun is different there's no sun at all maybe it's just like a horrific barren landscape so once we have that so painting up here and then even down here and and some of the the knee joints where it's almost blended in with the local tone that i use but not quite and then i'm going to show you where it's appropriate to get brighter than this over here because we we do need a spotlight okay this is just a diffused ambient light to show you a higher light source up there. But if you want a spotlight to show some kind of like speck highlighting where there could be sweat glistening or uh, if it's like a slippery kind of skin on the creature, then yes, you can get a little brighter, but you don't want to go too bright. Otherwise it'll seem washed out and, and that's a big no-no in painting. All right, so once we have this, we have some pretty good tones going on there. Next would be, to go back in and look at the parts where I would put a lighter highlight. Now, if I just eye drop that gray and I just go apply it back to the highlighted parts, it's not going to be much brighter. All right, so we need to get a little brighter. In that case, we're gonna go back into the color picker. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky and you gotta be careful. You still don't wanna use pure white because remember, there is no metal surface here. So the spec highlights while very, very subtle, would only get pure white, let's say if you have some kind of raindrop or, or sweat drop or even the eyeballs, which I am going to use. I'll show you why I'm gonna do that in a sec. But um, you wanna be very careful. So here's where that the highlighted gray is located here. I'm just gonna go halfway to white again, right there. So you notice that it's not pure white, but it's also brighter than that original tone. I'm going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick another brush, that, that tapered brush, tapered round brush with the opacity set at 78%. And I'm going to run it across the head here. Now you can see the effect that this is having. And instead of spreading it out everywhere, I'm only keeping it on the body parts that are highest up. So that means that it's kind of like a mountain peak. Mountain peak is going to catch more of the sunlight than it is down the slope. All right, same thing with this. And it's all about contrast too. So I'm just gonna kind of go in there. I'm gonna brush some over the eyeballs to make those stand out. All right, now I'm going to imagine like where these humps of muscle or heaps of muscle, however you wanna call it, where they would collect this highlight because you can't put it across the whole thing. It doesn't work like that because the light itself, no matter how small the spotlight, still has to disperse across the surface. So like for the shoulder area, the, the highest point of this deltoid, the point that's poking out the most is going to be right here. And once I get this, I'm going to slowly fade off some of that highlight going across the rest of the delt. And I'm going to stop. Okay, And now it, it's also going to happen within all of these little skin wrinkles too like here how it's going across 
I can zoom in a little bit for you just so you can see this. It's going across here. And then for these skin wrinkles that are kind of traveling from that opening, then it's going to collect a little bit of a highlight too. Next up would be this uh, big part of the back. So I'm just going to color this. And then I'm just going to run a straight line down. And then up here again. This. And then you can see where this this crazy looking neck is actually traveling underneath that large skin opening. I don't know what else to call it other than the skin opening. It's kind of gross. But we're just going to imagine that, that it's kind of like tremors under the dirt. You know, if you've seen that movie. It's going to be traveling underneath that skin. So out here on the brachialis muscle right here is going to be a highlight. And then notice how I'm carefully placing these brush strokes. A highlight on the rest of the forearm and I'm not getting crazy with it I'm, I'm just dispersing it enough to where it's not overbearing all right now when I'm looking at the bicep here yeah the part of the bicep is going to be poking out and then part of the tricep okay when I look at the wrist I think of the the tendons and the ligaments right at the carpal bones okay so these are the carpal bones in here this point is obviously the highest point of the hand, so that would get most of the highlight. So what we can do is we can go back to the, the soft brush, and then we're gonna run it across that area very gently, like this. Okay, now I'm going to take that round brush that I was just using, and I'm just going to put a, a slightly skinnier streak in running across that highlight. So what that does is it helps me disperse the light without having to use that round brush to do it because you know even though the round brush is set at 78% opacity it's not going to fan out the way I like it's just not so that's why you have to use that fan brush so let's highlight some of these muscle or the knuckles here but that's it you don't want to do too much otherwise it's going to look almost too uniform and it, it something will seem off so let's zoom out a little bit and now you can start to see that these areas are coming to life. And again, this is without going into a ton of detail about rendering. I'm going to, towards the end of this lesson, I'll show you how to combine your pencil line work, or, you know, if you're doing this digitally with the gray, so it's all on one layer, you're confident about how it's going. And then you can paint on top of your line work to really make it look good. All right, so once we have this, I notice that the contrast isn't good enough right here where the cast shadow is on this crazy wing appendage. In that case, I'm gonna go back to my soft brush and then I'm going to run it across right by that cast shadow. Now, why am I doing the same thing over here? Why am I doing that? Because now it's bringing attention to that cast shadow. And that's what you want. So now there's enough contrast. So when I look at this forearm over here, I'm going to go back to the shadow right there. And now I'm going to run that color across the forearm. Because the forearm is pointing down towards the ground, which means that it is, it's casting a shadow. So now when you look at it, there's enough contrast in between both of those body parts. It's all about contrast. The better job you do at this, the easier it is to colorize everything. That's why it's, unless you're a trained professional or you've been doing this a, a comfortable amount of time, uh, starting in color isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Okay, um, let's go into the, the bottom of the head here. Now, this, this part's interesting because as, as much as I want attention towards that head, I can't help but really be interested in that gnarly looking second face coming out of that abdomen. It's just disgusting looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to eye drop the, the highlight tone that I used. Okay, let's make sure that is halfway to white. Yeah, that's almost the exact same area. And then I'm going to put uh, a lot I'm going to use the soft brush and I'm just going to run it across those claws like this so they can really, really stand out right there. And then it'll look really good against any kind of shadow that I'm going to be putting.
putting in there, which I am here in a minute. The second thing is if that light's coming down this way, then there's going to be a highlight right around this part of that gnarly looking head because those, I guess you can call them giant, what do you, barnacle looking things? I don't know what you call them. Um, they're poking straight up like that. Now I'm going to go back into the shadow right here. I'm going to eye drop that shadow. See, this is so convenient just to have these three. I'm not jumping in here to this color picker and go, oh, maybe it's down here. Maybe it's almost charcoal black. No, I already have it before me. So I'm just going to paint right under the claws because there is where the light is really bending down and there's, there's not much happening. I'm even going to darken that eyeball right here because it was a little too light. So now it has like a nice uh, shine to it. And then even right here in these creases in between the eyeballs, you can put some of that shadow in there too. Now we're really getting somewhere because that part's looking really cool. And I don't have to worry too much about the rest of the creature. It, if I can draw the eye to a specific area that I want to sell, then that's all I have to worry about. Okay, um, the other thing that I've, I'm wanting to do is I want to brighten just a little bit of where these pus balls are. So I'm going to go back to the local tone, actually, because I need to brighten those up to see what's happening. And I'm just going to run that across. It looks like it's not bright enough, so I'll just go to my highlight gray, and I'll go across with highlight gray, and there we go. Okay, so now it's kind of preventing me from using something a little too dark. Again, the beauty of using just those three tones, it keeps your whole painting in check. All right, so once we have that, now we can do something a little fun. We're gonna eye drop this darker tone. And we're gonna go into the color picker and we're gonna go halfway to black from that tone. And then hit okay. And then we're gonna pick that harder round brush that I have and then I'm going to go straight over the eyeballs, only the eyeballs. Now look at what this does. It's pretty, pretty terrifying because it, it brings attention to those eyes and they already are not human. And now they're just looking even more intimidating. So we got that. Now what we can do is we can zoom out a little bit more to see the effect of that area being taken there. Yeah, that's really, really good. Okay, um, as promised, the, the last thing I want to talk about is what can you do to take away that line art when you have a digital layer, combine them both, and really make them look good? Well, I, before I get into that, I just want to explain the, the thing that is uh, the better your line work, the easier it is going to paint. Now, there's a lot of messiness happening around here. That's totally fine. That's the way thumbnails are supposed to be. We're going to clean that up. But the tighter you are with your line work um, when you're finishing up a sketch, the better it's gonna be when you scan it in. Okay, so I'm going to make a new layer right here. And I'm actually going to place that above the sketch layer. And then when I go and look at all the different line work that I have, so this is the drawing, that's, that's on its own layer. Now, I can choose, okay, I'm going to make this, this uh, layer right here, the local tone, and I'm going to make that where the muscle creases are. Okay. Now, what brush am I gonna use for this one? Probably the same one that I was using for the harsher shadows. That rounded brush, tapered at the end, set at 78% opacity. And then what I can do is I can get in here and kind of draw them in. So if you look at my cursor up there, it's happening above the sketch layer. So I can turn that off and on if I don't like it. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. I already have the highlights in there. So I'm just gonna eye drop them. So like somewhere up here near the trapezius. Okay, and I'm going to run back over here to try and paint in the skin wrinkles using the same brush. What that does is I'm painting over the sketches or the sketch, and it's it's totally painterly now. Okay, so depending on the brush that you actually use. Now, 
we've all heard it over the years. What brush do you use? What brush do you use? And honestly, you only really need to paint with a maximum of three different brushes digitally. You got your standard round brush that you can change the opacity. You do have some form of texture brush, okay? Whether it's something that can help you paint dirt, grime, rust, um, you know, and snow even, that's okay. And you can use that same thing painting everything. It's really, really, it works, it really does. So for example, I'm just using the sander. I'm gonna go right back to that sketch brush I used. Here's what it looks like blown up. Oh wait, that's the wrong color so you can't even see it. Here's what it looks like blown up, right like that. Um, I got this actually from my art director at Netties when I was working there. And uh, that was like two years ago and I still have the brush set. So I, I profusely thanked him for that brush set. It's really good. But anyway, if you look at the shoulder area up here, it's like, you know what, how can I clean that up? And I'm just going to eye drop the, the lighter tone here. And I'm going to paint over any of the hatch marks that I see with my pencil. Like this. And you can still keep it painterly. Again, pretend that you are in the year 1500. How would they approach brush strokes? So you have to treat yours the same way. And I think that a lot of artists are caught up with the shortcuts of you know, control Z and um, choosing different brushes with different textures. Sometimes they only paint it with like two brushes. So you have to try, I'm not saying you have to, but try to humble yourself and only use like one or two brushes and get good with your, you know, like your brush palette, um, the actual strokes, how you apply it. So you notice here, I'm starting to add the shadows in where the darker tones were with my line art. Okay, so let's zoom in here just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So, so right in here, all right, you can still see the texture of my line work. That's the thing. When you zoom in, you're just like, oh my gosh, I have so much work to do. When you zoom out, you're like, oh, that looks really detailed and finished. That's why you should never zoom in. Period. All right. Uh, it's especially if you look at paintings like uh, anything from Chuck Close. You know, look at his amazing, gigantic portraits, and you look close together, and it's just like, whoa. There's still so much work that you could do, but again, it's brilliant work. But anyway, I'm going to go back over here, and I'm eye dropping the darker tones. Again, I don't have to worry about choosing the wrong darker tones from scratch because I already am using the correct ones. So I'm just going to eye drop the shadow in here and I'm just going to place it right back up here for the deltoid muscle like this. And there we go. And the texturing is allowing me to keep some of those pencil strokes in. So when I'm done with this, it, it's looking very organic. It, you know, it, it doesn't look digital anymore. That's the key, right? Especially if you're a traditional artist and you want to scan your work in, it's looking traditional. There we go. So like that. So then when you zoom out, that bicep area is looking pretty good. And then I can eye drop that shadow again. So the shadow tone, let's let's pick an area on the creature where the shadow tone is. Oh, down here. Okay. Or I could just go straight over here, it doesn't matter. And then we'll just go back under the deltoid to make sure that that muscle's actually poking out past the bicep, which it actually does. Right, like that, and there you go. So then you could just kind of layer your, your artwork like that. So we, we took the regular sketch layer, okay, let's turn the details off so you can see the details added here. This is really cool. So let's, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit just so you can see it on camera. Like this, you can see the shat, the shoulder, all that turning on and off. There's my sketch layer, and then there's my value layer, and there's the sketch only underneath. All right, so hopefully that helped everybody. You know, I'm going to be going into more detail with later lessons about how to actually do color and everything, but I want everybody to focus on your values first. You master values, you cannot go wrong with color. Let me show you an example why really quickly before we end here. I'm gonna combine um, everything. 
Watch this. I'm going to combine everything. Sketch layer, all of it. Go to merge. Now I'm going to hit control U and I'm just going to have fun colorizing this. I'm going to click colorize. Now it's colorizing it and you can go down any hue ever. And it all looks pretty decent because the values underneath were good. There's a highlight happening where I want highlights to happen with every single color. So imagine the power of spending hours on your value sketch, because the, the more you spend on that, the better it's going to look when you colorize it. And I, I'm gonna love to go over colorizing too, because there's many different ways to do it. Have fun painting today, have fun sketching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.